Today we're taking a look at a Joe Biden versus Donald Trump rematch based entirely on current polls. Right now Biden has a lead of less than 1% nationally, but more than 10% of voters are still undecided or they're going to support a third party candidate. One other thing to keep in mind before we head to the map is that both men are very unpopular. Biden currently has a 41% approval rating with more than 54% disapproving. Trump left office with a 38.6% approval rating with nearly 58% disapproving. Today, about 40% of Americans view Trump favorably, while 56% view him unfavorably. Let's head to the map starting on the East Coast in Maine. It has been nearly a year since our last Maine poll, but unsurprisingly, Biden led Trump by 11. This would be a slight improvement for the Democrats as Biden won the state by 9 in 2020. However, Trump would likely pick up Maine's second congressional district. He won CD2 by more than 7% in 2020. In New Hampshire, two recent polls showed Joe Biden leading Trump by 9 and 12 points, respectively. This would be an improvement on Biden's 7-point victory in 2020. We don't have any polls from Vermont, but it does not matter. Joe Biden will carry the state easily. We do have some polls out of Massachusetts. They're about a year old, but the results aren't surprising. Joe Biden holds a massive lead. It is safe for the Democrats. New York is also safe for the Democrats. A recent poll from Siena shows Biden leading by 22 points. Polling also shows Joe Biden with double-digit leads in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Maryland. We don't have any polls from New Jersey, Delaware, or D.C., but it's safe to say Joe Biden will win all of these states pretty comfortably. Now let's talk about Pennsylvania, one of the states that will decide the 2024 election. Joe Biden won Pennsylvania by less than 2% in 2020, while Trump won it by less than 1% in 2016. It's shaping up to be razor thin again. In fact, the most recent poll actually shows a tie... Quinnipiac, a reliable pollster, has Trump up one. Public Opinion Strategies, a conservative pollster, has Biden up three. Franklin and Marshall College has Biden up one, while Susquehanna has Biden up seven. When we average it all out, we do get a narrow Biden lead, so I'm calling it lean Democrat for now, and this would be a huge victory for the Democrats. Moving down the East Coast to Virginia, a state both Clinton and Biden won. The most recent poll shows Biden up 16, slightly better than his 10-point victory in 2020. I'm going to call Virginia likely Democrat for now. Things are looking pretty bleak for Trump. He's down 122 to 1 electoral votes. However, we can give him West Virginia, even though there aren't any polls out of the state just yet. Trump also leads Kentucky by 24 points. Not a huge surprise there. And Trump holds double-digit leads in Tennessee, South Carolina, and Mississippi. We can also give Trump Alabama, despite a lack of polling, which brings us to these three important swing states on the East Coast, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Let's start with North Carolina. It's a state Trump won by about 3% in 2016 and a little more than 1% in 2020. The Democrats have already stated that North Carolina is one of the states they'd like to flip in 2024. Interestingly, Biden led almost every North Carolina poll in the week heading up to the 2020 election. However, Trump has led the two most recent North Carolina polls by 8 and 3 points respectively. Right now, the polls point to a narrow Trump victory in 2024. Current polling out of Georgia is a little interesting. We have one poll sponsored by a Democratic group. It shows Trump up 4. We have a poll conducted by Public Opinion Strategies, a conservative pollster. That shows Biden plus 2. And we have a poll sponsored by a Republican group that shows Trump up 1. Georgia is shaping up to be very close once again. Biden won Georgia by less than a quarter of a percent in 2020, while Trump beat Clinton by more than five in 2016. Interestingly, the average of polling aggregators in 2020 was plus 0.1% for Biden, so they were pretty spot on. I'm going to average our three results that we have right now and call it lean Trump. Florida is a state the GOP should be able to hold on to in 2024. Trump won it in 2016 and 2020. The most recent poll out of Florida Atlantic University shows Trump up by 10. I don't expect the margin to be that wide, but I think it's a likely Republican state. Staying in the South, we have some pretty old polling out of Louisiana and Arkansas, but the results won't shock you. Trump is up by double digits in both. Louisiana and Arkansas are safe for the GOP. Missouri is another state that's safe for the GOP. The polling is a little old, but the results were consistent with Trump leading by more than 15 in four out of the five polls. And we'll keep moving north up to Iowa, which is a pretty interesting state. Obama won it twice, then Trump won it twice. Trump carried Iowa by more than eight points in 2020, and the most recent poll shows Trump up 10 in Iowa. I am expecting the result in 2024 to be similar to what we saw in 2016 and 2020, likely Republican. 
We don't have any polling yet out of Indiana, but Trump should carry that pretty comfortably as well. On the flip side, Illinois has been a safe state for Democrats for several decades now, and 2024 won't be any different. Polling shows Joe Biden with about a 10-point lead. Don't be surprised if that number is higher on election night, as he carried the state by more than 17% in 2020. Now let's move on over to Ohio. It used to be quite a competitive swing state, but that has changed in recent elections. Trump carried Ohio by 8 points in 2016 and 2020. We've had two recent polls out of Ohio. One shows Trump up 10, the other shows him up 5, averaged those out to a 7.5% lead, and 2024 should be quite similar to what we saw in the last two election cycles. I'm calling it likely Republican. Let's move north to Michigan, a very important state in 2024. Trump famously carried Michigan in 2016 by less than 11,000 votes. But in 2020, Biden won Michigan by nearly 3%. Last election, Biden's aggregate lead was nearly 6%, so Trump did exceed his polling averages, and if he does it again in 2024, he could very well flip the state back. The two most recent polls show Biden leading Trump by 2% and 1%, respectively. That puts it into lean Democrat territory, but it's certainly in danger of flipping. Wisconsin looks a little bit safer for Joe Biden, based on current polls. We have three polls showing Biden with leads of 6, 9, and 3. The key poll here is the one from Marquette. They're an excellent pollster, especially when it comes to polling Wisconsin. I would not be surprised at all if Biden outperforms his 2020 victory where he beat Trump by nearly 3%. For now, I'm calling Wisconsin a lean state because it still should be pretty close. We also have one poll out of Minnesota which shows Biden leading Trump by 8%. Democrats have carried Minnesota in every presidential election since 1976, while the margins have been tight at times, notably 2016, where Clinton only won by 1.5%. I am expecting a pretty comfortable victory for Joe Biden here in 2024. We don't need any polling to know that Trump would carry both Dakotas as well as Nebraska statewide. However, in the absence of any polling, I'm going to give Joe Biden the slight edge in Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District. Biden won CD2 by more than 6% in 2020. However, Nebraska did redraw its maps in 2022, which may make the 2nd Congressional District slightly more favorable for the GOP. We do have some polling out of Kansas and Oklahoma, showing Trump with double-digit leads in both states. They are safe for him. However, Texas could get interesting. From 2000 to 2012, Republican presidential candidates carried Texas by double digits. Trump won Texas by 9 in 2016 and by less than 6 in 2020. Current polling suggests an even closer race in 2024. One poll has Trump up 2, while a poll sponsored by a GOP group has Trump up by just 3. It won't be long before Texas flips, but I don't think 2024 is the year it happens. Right now, the polls say this is a lean GOP state. We don't have any polls out of Hawaii or Oregon, but they will both be safe for Joe Biden. The Northwest Progressive Institute has gone to the trouble of polling Washington. The results won't surprise you. Joe Biden leads by 17. It's another safe state for Democrats in 2024. I'm not sure why money is being spent polling the presidential election in California, but Biden holds a 25-point lead over Trump. It's safe for the Democrats. And we don't have any recent polls out of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, or Montana, but Trump would carry them all pretty comfortably. And we don't have any polls out of Alaska, but I do think it would likely go to Trump. Republicans have won Alaska in every presidential election since 1968, and it usually hasn't been close. Biden's 10-point loss in 2020 was the closest the Democrats have gotten in the past 12 election cycles. With four states left on the map, we have a very close race, and the candidates are separated by just four electoral votes. Here's why I take a quick break to say, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button as it's the best way you can support this channel. Let's talk about these four remaining states, starting with Colorado. It used to be a purple state, and now it is getting more blue. Biden carried Colorado by more than 13 points in 2020, which was actually a larger margin of victory than the polls were predicting. The most recent poll shows Biden leading Trump by 10 points. I think Colorado is a likely Democratic state, but I understand the argument for those calling it safe. At this point, Biden would just need one of the three remaining states. The most likely victory would come from New Mexico, a state he won by more than 10% in 2020. The most recent poll does show Biden leading New Mexico by 11 points. I'm going to call it a likely Democratic victory for now, which brings Biden to exactly 270 electoral votes. Let's move to Arizona, a state Biden flipped by 0.3% in 2020. Arizona is becoming a lot more favorable for the Democratic Party, due in large part to the state's increasing Latino population. 
And the polls are predicting another very close race. One poll shows Biden and Trump tied. One poll, sponsored by a Democratic Party organization, found Trump up four. An earlier poll found Biden up two. Arizona is a true toss-up, but I don't like leaving blank spaces on the map. If we average these three results, we do get a narrow Trump victory. And in Nevada, we have a very interesting situation. There are plenty of polls, but I don't think any of them are very reliable. We have a public opinion strategies poll showing Biden up four. A poll sponsored by a Democratic super PAC found Biden up by two. A poll sponsored by a Republican super PAC found Trump up one. A poll conducted by Vote TXT, there are not rated by 538, found Trump up by eight. And a poll conducted by Noble Predictive Insights, they used to be OH Predictive Insights, found Biden up by eight. So if we take an average of these not-so-reliable polls, we do get Joe Biden up by about 1%. That result would be a bit closer than 2020, when he won by a little bit more than 2%. Clinton carried Nevada by about the same margin in 2016. Based on current polls, Joe Biden is leading Donald Trump 276 to 262, quite a bit closer than in 2020. But the polls aren't everything, especially this far out from the election, so check out my next video for my complete analysis on a potential Trump versus Biden rematch.